Hey guys, welcome to the Positive Experience Podcast, where we look at the good, the bad, and the ugly in living your best life. Today's segment is on the HEADS. The acronym stands for Health Experts and Disruptors. Let's dive in. Hey guys, welcome aboard to the Positive Experience Podcast. Today's segment is on HEADS, Health Experts and Disruptors. And today my guest is Nick Longhurst. Howdy Nick, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, mate. Thanks for having me on board. Great, mate. It's um, it's a bit, you know, we're in strange times, but I think it's great that we're still able to to chat one to one. Um, preferably, you know, we would like to be chatting across the way, maybe at a pub, but we'll continue I the same <laughs> same sort of banter with our conversation today. So, where I'd like to begin with was um, just giving you an opportunity to give us a, a snapshot on um, what you what you've been up to and who you are and what you're up to at the minute, please. Um, yeah, sure. So, um, what I've been up to at the moment, obviously it's pretty crazy times with this whole lockdown situation and everything, but at the moment, um, so yeah, for those of you who don't know me, I'm a, a professional strength and conditioning coach by trade. Um, obviously the gyms are kind of been shut down, so it's a pretty crazy time for me at the moment, but, um, yeah, do my SNC work. I've actually just started um, my own business, which is really exciting. So we can kind of touch on that at a later stage. But um, yeah, mate, at the moment, um, I've just, I'm just back at home, kind of hanging out with some of my old mates and my family and just spending some quality time here. It's been, um, yeah, it's been, it's been a crazy learning curve to do something completely different to what I was doing previously to everything that happened with lockdown. Um, I learned how to build a website, which is pretty crazy. So, yeah, uh, honestly, it's been a blessing to disguise for me, so no problems. And, yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying it. So it's been Mate, awesome. Let's, let's dive into that. So could you tell us um, uh, where you were born and where you did you spend most of your childhood? Where did you grow up, go to school? Yeah, um, so that's actually where I am right now. Um, it's this little area in New South Wales called the Southern Highlands and this, this town called Barrow. So I, grew, I, I was born in Sydney, but I grew up, I grew up here. Went to school, um, that's called Oxley College. And yeah, I, I finished my um, HSC, so I did year 12 there. And then um, from that, and Barrel is kind of like this little small country town. So there's not a whole lot going on here, but um, it was able to get me through somehow. So, and then after school, I went to the University of Wollongong where I went on to complete a bachelor degree in exercise science. Um, and then from there, I moved to Melbourne and I've blinked and three and a half years has gone by. And, and now here we are as, a, as an SNC coach. So yeah, it's been a cool, cool journey, but um, yeah. It's interesting to where, where it all begins, hey? Absolutely. You know, I think we've kind of switched roles because uh, I'm, I'm sort of a city slicker. And then uh, as I grew up, I'm being a city suburban guy. And then um, as I've gotten a bit older, I've moved out to the country. So yeah. I'm a bit beyond in Victoria here, I'm in a town called Gisborne. Uh, whereas you're, you're the, the country boy, grew up out in Borough, and then you've moved into the big city and then yeah. circle again. So it's, it's strange how, how life sort of takes you around on these different journeys. Isn't it? It's been cool to come back because it's just so quiet. Like my girlfriend and I, our apartment is right next to this this train line and every 10 minutes we hear the train going by and, you know, the the hustle and bustle of the city can get pretty noisy sometimes and it's been crazy to hear nothing essentially back here. So it's a nice change for sure. Absolutely. Big reset. So if I was to come back to your high school days, did you already know early days that you're heading towards like health and SNC or was there like a formative experience you had? Like maybe you had a teacher or maybe you're a gun athlete and you just wanted to stay in that world. So why, why SNC and, and being a, a performance coach rather than being in the cubicle, being an accountant, for example? Yeah. Yeah. So um, I kind of, from day dot, essentially, I, I always knew that I was, passionate about sport and fitness and that's kind of where my energy is and where I'm drawn to. So um, like I played throughout my um, high school and and uni days, I I played rugby for the better part of nine years. Um, And yeah, that was, that was really cool because that kind of fueled that, that energy that I had for sport. So um, that was kind of like my outlet and and um, for quite a long time there, that was uh, where I had a career aspiration as well. Like I wanted to 
um, pursue becoming a professional rugby athlete as you know most young teenagers have that dream of becoming a sports star so that was kind of where it all started and then um, kind of progressing to you know my later senior studies and then on to university um, strength and conditioning so I actually wanted to kind of go down your path there is I wanted to become a physio um, there was no like particular influential person it was just like a, a thing that I, I thought I would be good at um, and it was in my third year at uni I just I just stumbled across I was just doing some some research online and I stumbled across this strength and conditioning degree and I just kind of dived into that a little bit more and researched a little bit more and I didn't even know it was its own industry to begin with and I kind of I was like, oh, wow, that sounds so much better. That sounds really cool. So I kind of researched that a little bit more, um, reached out to some people in, in Melbourne, and that was where I was able to land my first internship. So I guess to kind of a long-winded way to answer your question, I've always been really passionate about sport, and I kind of knew that I wanted to develop a career in that field in some way, shape, or form. And it just happened to that strength and conditioning thing just happened to come up and that's that's what I've chased. So but yeah, mate, no regrets. I'm I'm bloody loving it. So it's been going well. Mate, congratulations. Now you know that I can talk with you about rugby all day. I'm a rugby man. So I'm assuming <laughs> is this union being a country fella or, or league? Yeah, yeah. Big, big union player and, and fan. That's the way. And did you have any big names that you played with that went on and, and did great things or anyone you shared a jersey with or anyone you came across in Southern Highlands, Southern Highlands mm -hmm. rugby? That's a good question. Um, to be honest, not really. Like, I don't think the, the talent pool in the Highlands was great enough to kind of go that far, especially with the guys that I played with and um, kind of post-school, everyone just kind of branched off and did their own thing. So not really, but I mean, it did. It, it still was, you know, awesome to play footy for um, the better part of my teenage years and into my early 20s. So, I'm yeah. You. I'm with you. Rebels or Waratahs? Or a Tars, mate, all the way. <laughs> I think the Rebels need to pick the game up a bit, so. <laughs> oh, jeez. KB, Kurt Beal, I read this morning, he's off to, to France, so getting some some uh, French Euros now, so he's been a long oh, time. Bloody pay them a fair bit to go and do that, so it's uh, not a bad option. Cool. Nick, um, coming back to, to your passion with s &C, you know, I follow you. Um, quite a lot on the stuff that you put up on your on your own personal uh, Instagram handle, which is which is great. You have these sort of save and work out um, things that I really dig. You know, was yeah. that was that something that um, you know you're obviously pushing this out for your own health and well being. Tell us a little bit about um, how you your, your particular philosophy on on strength and conditioning. Like, are you looking to get a lot of strength and mobility? Are you looking to try and um, you know push heavy things? Give us an idea on your philosophy on, on strength training. Okay. Um, I'll just touch on the, the whole save and workout thing that you brought up first. So a guy that I train with, uh, a guy by the name of Chris Nainer, he, um, he kind of started doing that and um, he's quite big on Instagram. He has like 170,000 followers or something. So I've been learning a lot off him and in, in building my social profile. And um, the reason for that is to just kind of give people value, you know, to kind of share with them how I'm training, what I'm getting up to and kind of giving them something, literally a workout that they can follow if they have the right equipment or whatever. So that's kind of how that whole thing started, which has been really fun to experiment and kind of show people a little bit more about what I'm getting up to. But in terms of uh, strength training and kind of my philosophy on training in general, um, I think that a lot of people these days go through just that kind of mundane training regime of like, you know, that classic bro split of like, oh, chest day, back day, leg day, whatever. Um, and don't get me wrong, I've fallen into that trap as well in my later days in high school. And um, since now that I'm a lot more educated and experienced in the field, I know that um, where I've gotten a lot of value myself through my own training, but also with my, my athletes is programming for functional movement and that's why I'm very big on CrossFit as well. Um, the thing that, and I know when, you know, people think of the, the word CrossFit, they just think straight away to those like kipping pull-ups, which is fair enough. It gets a pretty bad name in that regard. But where, where it does provide a lot of value is just the constant stimulus 
that you get. And this is something that I apply in my own training and to the athletes that I coach. Um, yeah, trying to, whether it's changing set and rep schemes, whether it's changing tempo, range of motion, external load on the barbell, um, to be able to continue to improve and get adaptation, therefore get results, we need to constantly give stimulus. Um, so, yeah, that's probably my biggest take on my training philosophy is you just you have to vary it up to, to give your body stimulus something to adapt to so that you can continue like an upward trajectory, I guess. Perfect. Yep, I agree. I think the... Um when, when you're learning anything new, you're giving yourself a chance to adapt. And with that adaptation, you achieve the growth that you're after. And then yeah. you sort of reset the, the playing field and then you, intu- uh, you introduce a new stimulus. And then again, the body will adapt, you know. So you know, personally, yeah. there's, you know, some, some personal health journeys that we're all on. Like, for example, I subscribe to an ice bath and that may be crazy, just like some people see. Crazy thing. I've seen you doing that. That's cr- uh, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, well, but yeah oh geez maybe I was, I was supposed to be born in the northern hemisphere somewhere in russia where they jump into those ice blasts but <laughs> um I, I guess what i'm getting to is the adaptation happens over time you know and the work that you're doing and the specific programming is is the reason why you're needing that that coaching and, and the hand holding so you get the results that you're after so i'm yeah. with you on the adaptation thing absolutely is, yes. is i guess the other thing as well is just like um Training, I think people get this idea of exercise and, and kind of training is like this, this, big, this big task. And like, don't get me wrong, it's, it's hard when, you, when you're putting yourself through the paces sometimes, but training can be really fun, you know? And I think that uh, what, like, I, just, I just really enjoy what I do and I enjoy sharing that with other people. So if there are ways that people can find you know, enjoyment in their workouts and in their training regime, they're going to just buy into it so much more and they're going to have so much more energy towards that. So I think that is huge, having that energy and being that's, passionate. That's awesome because I could tap into your energy there if you're coaching me the way through. Is there a specific hack or a cue that you give people um, to, to share that same enthusiasm? Like if you're helping them along, trying to, to find the right programming for them? Um. There's not really a particular cue, and I know that the athletes that I've worked with will attest to this. Um, it's my kind of thing that I bring into my coaching is my energy. So yeah. I try and you know lift them up and get them on another level because I'm enjoying it and I'm enjoying seeing them go through the motions as well. So I think there's no particular, yeah, like one trick fix that I use. It's just my kind of approach and my kind of energy as a whole. Um, and that's purely just from a passion standpoint. I just, I just love, I just love it. So. Absolutely. Um, and I can. It's easy. So, yeah. Sorry about that. I made to cut you off. So I just wanted to, to bust in and say that I can attest to this. You know, Nick was gracious enough to allow me to observe him, um, you know, teaching the craft and whether it's one-on-one coaching or in a group setting, which is where I observe Nick working. Um, it was awesome. I would probably say there was, um, I'd say around about 10 to 20 different athletes working independently and Nick was working uh, within a team, but managing uh, a, a different types of athletes. I think there was, uh, there was high caliber referees. There was, um, I think there was a rowing athlete, a few netball athletes. Um, there was uh, an ath- a high level um, junior athletics athlete. And I was, I was in the background. I was observing. And Nick was um, coaching all these different athletes, and it was the thing that I struck from this that, uh, experience. That's what <laughs> it it, it, yeah, it, it, it's it's massive, and he's like a maestro. You know, you have this orchestra, and you're just trying to keep an eye. You only have two sets of eyeballs, but he's managing up to about twenty different athletes, and it was really impressive. But the energy is the thing that ties all these that I observed that tied all these people together. And, uh, you know, that's just a big virtual pat on the back, big fella, because um, that one time that I'd seen you was just very impressive. So, uh, yeah, I, that a lot. Thank you. I want to give you a yeah. shout out. And, uh, I guess that to, for me, it's just like, uh, I mean, my dad kind of said this to me when I was thinking about what career I should be doing. And he was like, mate, just do what you love and everything else will follow. So, for me, 
I love what I do and I mean that's it really so okay yeah. so look uh let's go the other way and let's look at when there's some pushback right so you're, you're passionate and then you cop an injury so if there's been something that you've done and you'd have to modify your training perhaps um, did you pull a hammy early days as you were training maybe in your your bro fit days you pumped you know something a bit too heavy in the chest could you share a war story of a personal injury that you suffered yeah, absolutely. So I touched on earlier how I, I played rugby for the better part of nine years. Um, and I, it was in my first grade, first grade days in high school. Um, there was just like a, a, a tackle that I got into, you know, classic body on body collision, um, just hit the wrong angle. And um, I actually had a, I'm not sure if you're aware, you probably are, um, a hill sax lesion in my, in my right shoulder. Um, it popped out. I didn't pop out, but it's always kind of ever since then it's been kind of like male lines, so the humeral head doesn't fit to like the the groove as it should. Uh-huh. Um, and basically, from that, like it, it's kind of the the byproduct of that injury is is what affected me, not really the injury itself. So I was kind of known for like my defense and my defensive play. Um, when I used to play rugby and ever since I had that shoulder injury, it kind of, I never had the same confidence going into tackle. Yeah. Um, and it, and the long-term effect of that was, you know, I kind of just lost my enthusiasm for rugby a little bit. Um, and, but I guess the kind of lesson that I've learned now, so my reflection was, okay, I don't really want to play rugby anymore. What can I kind of invest my energy into now? And that's where my love for coaching and training kind of grew. And um, yeah, obviously um, I've I've been doing that now for a while. And um, with my CrossFit training in particular, it's been awesome to see results because my shoulder's stronger, it's more stable. And the thing that I kept playing to myself in my head when I was playing rugby was, Oh, it's always external and, and I have no control over it. But when I'm training, it's like, okay, I can snatch this much. I know how much I can put on the bar. I'm confident in my ability to do that. And then you just kind of take your little wins here and there. So I guess what I'm trying to say is like the lesson that I learned was, you know, originally I was super keen on rugby, but then I had this, you know, this adversity come in the way and then it has led to me following a path in, in in what I do today. So I think um, just allowing life to change and being flexible and adaptable to that change is key because it something is, and it didn't seem like a big deal at the time, but something as small as that injury has eventually led to, to me kind of going down this road. And I mean, it's been a complete change in my whole life, you know? So that was probably the, the key take home for me, mate. I appreciate that war story. And I think that there's a heap of gold nuggets just in there. But when you, you put all your eggs in the one basket and then you had the resilience to just observe all your options in front of you and then you thought, okay, we're going to make the pivot and just head this way and just continue pushing on and following where your passions are. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that the challenge is when we start to, uh, when you extinguish that curiosity that you have, and then you kind of limit yourself and then next thing you know, the passion dies away. So I compliment you on yeah. letting the passion still burn um, quite brightly. <laughs> yeah, so, that's it. We've, got to, we've got to make do somehow, don't we? Yeah, we do. So if I was to ask you and put you under the microscope of your typical, like a typical day in, in, um, in Nick's life, like mm-hmm. uh, how would it look like with your training schedule? So um, just, just like a, a vanilla sort of stock standard day, like are you early out of bed in the morning? Um, or you're a bit sluggish or you're a bit more of a night owl like when do you prefer to train that sort of thing are you are you um you know practice some form of fasting perhaps or do you load up and and count the calories Um, give us a snapshot there mate give us some more golden nuggets okay um well it's kind of i've had to create a new routine obviously because um of the changes that coronavirus has has brought on but usually in terms of um when i train I'm usually a kind of like middle of the day kind of guy. So when um, when life is back in full swing in Melbourne, the 12 p.m. CrossFit class is I'm usually a regular there. Um, so I've been trying to replicate that as much as I as much as I can whilst being back home. Um, it allows me training at that time is simply because it allows me to um, you know fuel my body with some fu- with some brekkie. 
um, have a good night's sleep the night before and then have be relatively awake and kind of ready to go. Um, yeah, so that's probably where training where training lies. Um, I know this is a kind of massive controversial topic in the, the fitness industry with the whole calorie counting. Um, to be honest, I've never been a huge fan of it. Okay. I think that um, I, I know roughly where my kind of basal metabolic rate is and what I have to be hitting to, to increase muscle mass because that's kind of what I'm trying to achieve at the moment. Um, but I, I don't like how it kind of ruins the enjoyment of eating food because food for, for me and I'm sure a lot of others is very social, like big family dinners and lunches and coffees and stuff like that. And my philosophy is simply just as long as you're fueling your body with good food and you're avoiding, you know, anything that's ridiculously processed or full of sugar, then I think it's, I think it's going to be okay. But, uh, my mum and dad will definitely speak the fact that I eat a lot. So <laughs> it's got to account for something. Mate, that's an awesome philosophy. Absolutely. If it's good for you, get it in. Not so much. You know, I think that the social side of gathering and eating food, um, you know, from like a, a parasympathetic sort of setting where you're sitting and enjoying each other's company, that's something that we should celebrate. You know, sometimes we're so big on, you've got to be busy, you've got to be busy, you know, eat on the run. Um, sometimes mm. may work against us. So I yeah. see, what, I hear what you mean about that. So that's, that's mm. really cool, man. I think the, the other thing that I was looking for with your routine, like are you um, someone that has to get your eight hours of sleep or are you pretty good with getting, you know, operating minimally on six to four to six hours of sleep or sleep comes to you naturally, your head hits the pillow, you're out. Um, yeah, so when I was back in Melbourne um, with the company I previously worked for coaching, you know, full time. I was getting up at 5 a.m., pretty much uh, doing the morning shift, the evening shift, and I was getting home at like 9 p.m. So the sleep cycle was was pretty crazy with that. Um, and I, as I'm sure a lot of kind of PTs would be able to relate to that, it's uh, a crazy, crazy hours in the industry for sure. Um, but in terms of routine, like, yeah, if, if I'm hitting seven to eight hours of sleep, I've got I've got enough energy to kind of do the day. And my main thing is just consistency, really. So I'm usually in bed around 10 o'clock in the evening and I'd like to be up anywhere between 7 and 8. Um, it's, it's hard. It's been, yeah, crazy to establish routine when, like, life has been put on hold, essentially. But that's usually the kind of the way I operate is just having that routine and having that consistency. Same bedtime, same wake-up time. You eat at different intervals during the day. Um, yeah, because then like those kind of time frames throughout the day hold you accountable. So then if you don't hit it, you're like kind of get this bad feeling, I guess. So that, yeah, that, that helps me. I think consistency is, is huge. Yeah. Consistency is key. Absolutely. So if we were to make the transition, so obviously with the coronavirus, um, has caused a lot of chaos, but I think there could be some, um, the, with the challenge with chaos is that it gives us opportunities, you know, so. I'd like to sure. visit the aha moment and uh, the birthing of Realm Fitness. So tell us a little bit about that and what your thoughts are and where you're at with that currently. Okay, so um, with the, uh, I guess the aha moment, I've ever, like ever since I can remember, ever since I've, you know, been passionate about sport in general, I've wanted to do my own thing. Like I've had dreams of running my own gym and, um, yeah, it's pretty cool to say that I've, I've got my own business now. Um, but where it all started, I guess there wasn't really an aha moment. It was just more like conversations and ideas that developed over time. So, And it's, it's kind of cool to watch it manifest from an idea to a conversation to, okay, like get the business name registered. Then, oh, now I've got to get a logo and build the website. And it just it's, it's cool to watch that momentum build over time um yeah so i guess throughout my years of coaching i realized that um this is what i'm good at this is what i'm passionate about and i want to turn this into a business and that obviously kind of fuels my my dream so that they, it kind of just aligned for me um and i guess uh, Having the stimulus of, I mean, coronavirus has been a blessing in disguise for me, if I'm being completely honest. Having the, the opportunity of time up my sleeve um, when, 
you know, I don't have to be working because I can't work because the gyms are on hold. It's been a great um, opportunity to invest a lot of time into that idea. So quite quickly, things have manifested and, and progressed over the past couple of weeks. Um, so where it's at at the moment, um, when I moved back to New South Wales, yeah, I was building my website up for the better part of five weeks. Um, just kind of prepping for the launch of the website. And then that went live last week. And um, I actually have uh, three clients on board training, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, so it's, it's happened really fast. Um, but it's, it's cool to kind of sit here and, and tell you, you know, that I can announce it to the world and that it's a, it's a passion that I can finally, you know, it's tangible. Like there's, I'm actually training people now and there's, I've got the website up and yeah, it's a really exciting time. So um, I'm glad that I finally had the opportunity to bite the bullet and, and go for it. Congratulations. You know, it's, it's one of those things, I think when you're, you're birthing your baby and then, you know, you got to, the, the baby's cute and uh, it grows with time, but you know, you also got to change the nappy and you got to make sure that oh. <laughs> and all those sorts of things. So Man, awesome. So we'll, we'll have a lot of the information um, that Nick's uh, sent to us regarding uh, Realm Fitness and the great stuff he's building up there in country New South Wales. Um, we'll return to that shortly, but I just wanted to ask a few quick fire questions, if that's all right for you, big fella. Oh, so, man, hit me. Right. Well, one or the other. So do you prefer the beach or the trees? Beach. Okay. Easy. That makes sense because you've probably grown up around the trees. Yeah. <laughs> okay well, no that from Cronulla so we've got the beach right there so it's pretty sweet oh that's right yeah uh, night in or net uh, sorry night out or Netflix oh mate I'm gonna have to go Netflix with this one I think I don't want to throw you <laughs> under the bus with the boss <laughs> uh, what are you watching what are you watching on Netflix what's got you fancy um I have recently dived back into some classic, some classics, mate. So, uh, you know, How I Met Your Mother. I've, I've kind of watched that once and I'm re-watching that. Um, me and my dad have said to each other, we're going we're to start watching Breaking Bad again. Uh-huh. If you, but yeah, we love that. So um, it's, a bit, it's a bit violent for my girlfriend, but my dad's keen. He's watched it a couple of times as well. So we're just going to do that um and you're probably gonna laugh at me for saying this but lego masters <laughs> i've been watching yeah. that as well <laughs> yeah it's been sweet i don't know why hamish blake just makes it hilarious so yeah <laughs> been good no mate that's awesome we're watching criminal mind reruns just going back to some oldies as well so oh, nice the classics are good awesome all right mate nepal and new york New York, I've been drawn to the city vibes. So, yeah, I reckon the, the city that the sleeps would be pretty cool. Never been there myself, but, yeah, definitely planning to, to go, hopefully soon. That's the one. Okay. Country acreage or inner city loft? This oh. is a tough one for you, I reckon. This, yeah, this is a tough one. This is a tough one because we're like, oh, we're making plans to, you know, buy a house soon and we're like, oh, where do we go? I... Probably have to go country acreage just because of the space, I reckon. But like semi close to the city, so you you're close, you know, no FOMO, <laughs> close to the action. I hear that. There's this thing called the footy kick test. So if you can kick a footy in the backyard, it passes the test. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah, that's sweet. Okay, four to Holden. Um, Holden, just because that was like one of the first cars that I had, so I got to stick oil. I'm with you there, Team Holden. Okay, and if you were to name two, the top two things you do as soon as lockdown lifts, any top two things, what would be the first two things off the top of your mind? Train in a proper gym and hold a barbell is absolutely the first thing. <laughs> I've got a crazy, mate. I haven't held a barbell in my hands for like over two months now. It's, uh, oh, no. I've been surviving off a pair of 22 and a half kilo dumbbells these past two months, so... Absolutely, without fail, thing number one. And then thing number two is just have a beer with the boys and catch up in a, in a pub, in a public space, I think, um, just because that's going to be so nice to kind of get back to normal life, you know. I hear so, mate. Yeah. I think we're all missing the golden nectar at the pub, absolutely. <laughs> okay, sure. last quick fire is um, if you were to whip out your phone and you pop on your Instagram account, who's one account there that you're following closely? It might be someone that you, you know, you like following for a laugh, maybe someone that you're really inspired, you know, in the health space. 
Um, you already gave a shout out to to somebody earlier. Would there be somebody else that you really keep a close eye on and what they're up to? Definitely. Um, so there's a guy by the name of Noah Olson. He's one of my favorite CrossFit Games athletes that I look up to. And um, he's just kind of overall vibe and energy and the way he composes himself um, is really cool to kind of watch what he get up, gets up to. Um, and he's got something stupid like, 600 odd thousand followers it's it's crazy but also the the workouts that he puts up are pretty crazy too so it's cool to kind of see you know constantly a day in the life of w- what life is like as a crossfit games athlete so yeah go check him out awesome thanks for that you know it's such a crazy time we live in you know the people that once upon a time you think you couldn't reach or you couldn't tap in and, and wonder about how they operate their day um, everyone's just so accessible. It's so crazy. And they're giving away like, their best stuff, um, how their mind works, you know, how, who they're reading, what music they listen to. It's, mm. it's so good, you know, the time we're living in. So, um, yeah. We definitely have a lot of good, uh, you know, outlets at our fingertips. So it's, it's cool to be able to see what those kind of big profile guys are up to. And, yeah. Cool, cool mate. More. All right. We're circling around, coming down the home stretch. So I'd love to give you the microphone there and just – give us a chance to talk a little bit more about what you're looking to do into this next period of time. Um, tell us a bit more about Realm Fitness and um, anything else that you've got up your sleeve for us, big fella. Um, yeah, so the next kind of, I guess, maybe the rest of this year is just going to be focused on um, building my client base up with Realm Fitness. So, yeah, it's been, like I said before, it's been so cool to kind of watch that and the essence of that come to life. So yeah, just going to keep trying to grow my client base and, and add value to the people that I'm training where I can. Um, moving forward, when lockdown is over, I'll be back in Melbourne. Um, I've teed up some work already with um, one of my mates in a gym. So going to help him, help him out there. So um, yeah, I'm I'm pretty keen to to be honest. I'm I'm kind of getting sick of lock lockdown, and I'm ready to to get back into the swing of things, but unfortunately it's not up to me. So I'm just going to have to buy my time, but um, yeah, mate, it's been good. Like I've, I've had things to keep me going. So yeah, I can still um, find passion in those, in those outlets. Yeah. Perfect guys. There you have it. So Nick Longhurst, he's like a, a dropped can of Coke. He's full of fizz. He's ready to go and ready to launch back in post um, yeah. post lockdown. So, mate, I appreciate your time with us here these last 30 minutes, just getting to know you a bit more. I'd love to come back and catch up with you, say, in six to 12 months, touch base about the Realm Fitness stuff and um, have a beverage, get some of that golden nectar back in when you Uh, land on your feet back in. Hopefully we can do it in person next time, eh? That's the one, mate. Cool. All right, guys. So we'll have um, a lot of the contact details uh, for Realm Fitness and and Nick. Um, Also, support him by jumping on and seeing what he's up to on Instagram there. And the handle there, Nick, is at Realm Fitness. Uh, Yeah, so my Realm Fitness one is at uh, R-E-A-L-M dot fitness. But my main account, which I'm most active on, is my personal one, which is at Nick Longhurst, N-I-C-K-L-O-N-G-H-R-S-T. I'm on it all the time, so hit me up. (laughs) Awesome, mate. All right, thank you so much for your time, big fella. I really enjoyed the chat. Stay safe up there in country New South Wales and go the Wallabies. Yeah, up on mate. Thanks. Thanks All right. Thanks, mate.